Hello, hello. I'm readjusting my camera here. I had some technical difficulties to start out with, but here I am. Hey, welcome. This is another episode of my Fit Friday chat, where each week I chat about something in regards to going through menopause or perimenopause so that we can kick menopause in the ass. You see, we're going to manage menopause one hot flash at a time, baby. Now today's topic is all about menopausal belly fat or otherwise known as menopod. Um, we tend to accumulate some fat around the abdomen during this time of our lives and I'm going to chat about today why as well as tips on how we can decrease the belly fat. Now this is a two-parter everybody so the sequel or the final tips will be released next Friday. So I'm going to go through five tips today on how to get rid of that menopausal belly fat. Now first we need a little backstory. Why the heck are we gaining weight around the midsection during our perimen and menopausal years? Well hormones are to blame for one. We've got changes happening, so our body's adapting to those changes, and it's adapting to those changes negatively around the midsection. Second, as we age, we become more insulin resistant. Now again, I'm going to be looking just a little past the camera because I've got this all up on my blog, and I want to make sure that I hit all of the keys on how to burn menopausal belly fat. So as we age, become more insulin resistant, and this is simply due to poor choices in food that we tend to make through the years. So we have fast food, we have quick food, we have easy foods, and those are going to eliminate, or sorry, make us more resistant to insulin. Now a diet high in breads, pastas, those high sugar coffee drinks you love at Starbucks, uh, packaged foods, and just sugar in general will expose us to higher blood glucose levels thereby creating insulin sensitivity and resistance in our bodies and our bodies will then make the calories that we that we get in our body convert more to fat as opposed to fuel so second or third sorry thing that happens why we're gaining more weight around the midsection as we get into our perimenopausal years is because we are losing lean muscle tissue and this is a huge passion of mine and the whole cornerstone to my over 40 training program for women that I have online on my website. You see, at the age of 30, we start to decrease our lean muscle tissue and that rapidly decreases after the age of 45. Now, lean muscle tissue burns a ton of calories. In fact, it burns twice as many calories as it does fat. And why is that? Well, it requires the body more energy to keep a pound of muscle warm as opposed to a pound of fat. So we need to maintain that lean muscle mass and unfortunately as we get older as I said we're going to lose that lean muscle tissue and then if we don't do activities like strength training instead we go out for runs or walks we're not going to build that lean muscle tissue. Next is lack of sleep. This is a huge one. When we don't get enough sleep all right, we get two hormones leptin and ghrelin. They become out of balance. Now leptin's the hormone involved in regulating our appetite. I can't even look and read at the same time. I'm tripping over my language. Uh, I'm going to blame it on Dristan. I've been sick for over a week now and yeah, I'm just drugged up on Dristan 24 hours a day. But really sadly, I just need more practice being live, I think. Anyways, lack of sleep is a big buzzkill when it comes to... Oh, hi Jen, looking forward to this. Awesome. Welcome. So Jen, I'm just reviewing why, why we're gaining weight right now. So lack of sleep. When we don't get a good night's sleep, we've got two hormones, okay? Leptin and ghrelin that become out of balance. Now leptin is the hormone involved in regulating our appetite and it's telling our brains when we're full. Now that becomes elevated with lack of sleep. So it's always telling our brain, sorry, it becomes <laughs> decreased when we don't get enough sleep. Whereas ghrelin, which tells us when we're hungry, becomes elevated. So we're always hungry when we have lack of sleep. And we're always hungry for more carb-rich foods, which we'll tend to turn to. Now, stress is a final one that is huge in why we're storing fat. 
with the increased demands in our lives, accompanied with years of yo-yo dieting and binge eating and whatever stress we else we've put on our bodies, as well as undiagnosed food sensitivities, our bodies are under constant amounts of stress. Now, if we allow this stress to manifest itself on a daily basis, over time, our adrenal glands, these are located on top of each of our kidneys and they're responsible for a variety of hormones, they will reach fatigue and our once efficient adrenals, okay, helping us deal positively with stress responses will become out of balance and will begin storing calories instead of burning them. So, what is that? One, two, three, that's five reasons why we're gaining weight. Hormones, as we age, we become more insulin resistant due to poor choices we made through our lives with our foods. We start to lean, lose lean muscle tissue, which is inevitable, so we need to solve that with strength training. Lack of sleep, which happens through a variety of things, whether it be um, hormones or just we're not able to turn off the brain, but that in turn messes up with our two hormones responsible for telling our brain and stomach when we're hungry and our, when we're full. And then finally, stress. Now, our adrenal glands, when they're out of balance, a really common symptom is of uh, extra fat around the waistline. You see, in normal circumstances, when we're under stress, the brain will signal to our adrenal glands to release cortisol, and that's normal because we need that when we are in response to stress. Unfortunately, when we are constantly under stress, our adrenals keep pumping out cortisol. Now, it's cortisol's job to mobilize our glucose, amino acids, and fat to prevent our blood sugar levels from going too low. So it's trying to make sure that our control center, our brain, will always have energy and food to keep it going. However, after years, or sometimes even months for some women, of long-term stress, that cortisol and insulin levels will remain high in the blood, and that extra glucose in the body will then convert to fat, and in women, mostly in our abdomen and our thighs. So goodbye thigh gap, goodbye our hello muffin top. In addition, the fat being stored in the abdomen is also the body's way of protecting the internal organs because that's what the body is meant to do, is to always protect itself. So it's placing that extra layer of fat on our abdomen because it thinks that perhaps the body is under attack and it needs to protect the internal organs. So then how do we lose it? <laughs> well, Number one, the most important giveaway and tip I can give you is please to learn to control your stress, all right? Stress increases your cortisol production, and in turn, as I just mentioned, that packs the pounds on around the midsection. And again, cortisol's not doing that because it's being an a-hole. It's doing that because it's its job to increase that fat around the abdomen because it thinks the internal organs are in danger. However, there's no real threats, are there? We're just stressing because that's what we do. We stress. Now, as I mentioned, long-term stress will also cause our cortisol and insulin levels to remain high in our blood. When this happens, that extra glucose in our body will get stored as fat. And for us ladies, it's the fat in our abdomen and fat in our thighs. So if you really, truly want to lose the belly fat, you need to learn to control your stress. Now, this can be through a variety of ways, but meditation and yoga are the two most popular. Now, if you don't have time or access to a yoga studio, I highly recommend downloading an app called um, Headspace. Hi, Maureen. Headspace is a free app. They've got a 10-day challenge that you can download, and I play that on my iPad every night. Now, Headspace, I actually have the paid version of Headspace, which allows walking meditations as well as anxiety meditations, stress-busting meditations. It's got a variety of different programs you can do. It's a fantastic app. It's one of the most popular ones out there. It's called Headspace. Now, another thing you can do to calm yourself down and calm your stress levels down is simple deep belly breathing. See, deep breathing will stimulate the vagus nerve, and this calms down our overreactive central nervous system. Now, I've got a super simple breathing exercise up on the blog, fitnesswithpj.com, under this blog posting, so check it out. So you can simply do this little breathing exercise to five to 10 minutes every day, and that will bring down the cortisol levels and calm the overreactive central nervous system. Second thing I need you to do, 
is strength train. I know, you were waiting for that, weren't you? But hey, listen, it goes without saying that we need to build the lean muscle tissue if we're losing it. And if we're losing it at a rapid rate after the age of 35, oh, ladies, we need to pick up some iron. And I'm not talking five or 10 pounds. I need you to build up so you're actually building lean muscle tissue. Now, I recommend a minimum of twice a week weight training, but ideally three times a week. All right. And this is total body. So this doesn't mean you need to get into fancy split body routines or what you see out there in the magazines. Just pick eight to 10 exercises that hit all the muscles in the body and go for it. All right, you need suggestions. Remember, I've got the YouTube channel and I've got all the workouts up on my blog at fitnesswithpj.com. The third thing we can do to help lose the belly fat, and this is gonna sound counterproductive, but hear me out, is to eat regular meals throughout the day. All right, nothing will damage your metabolism more and then pack that weight around the midsection than starving yourself and going on yo-yo diet after yo-yo diet. You see, we need to keep our blood sugar levels steady, and this is so that we can prevent that extra cortisol being released. Remember, cortisol is a buzzkill because it loves to add that abdomen fat. Now, eating regularly will also kill us from doing any binge eating, and we've all done it. I'm guilty of it. I was getting ready for a show way back, and I starved myself for three months, and oh my goodness, when that show was done, you could not get me away from bread, pizza, cookies, spiced rum. I went crazy. I lost that, that brain-stomach connection that told me when I was full. I just kept eating. So we need to keep a sensible, regular eating pattern. And we need to start having a positive relationship with food as well. All right, we're not going to punish ourselves with a kale salad and reward ourselves with a cookie. We need to think of better ways that we think of food and we treat food. The fourth tip on how to get rid of menopausal belly fat is to eat more protein. All right, I want you to aim for a gram of protein per body weight. So if you weigh 150 pounds, 150 grams of protein. Now this protein will help support the lean muscle tissue that you're going to build in the gym. Yes. It'll leave you feeling fuller for a longer period of time. And it will actually save calories and how much you eat because you're feeling satisfied sooner and thus eating less food. Okay. Now most people that I coach and that I have trained in the 24 years that I've been doing this do not eat enough protein. And this is really, I see this quite often actually with my older women, um, they're in their 60s and their 70s, you know, they'll have a piece of toast for, for dinner. So if you're not sure whether or not you're hitting your protein gram targets a day, I highly recommend downloading one of the many or tons of free food apps, food journaling apps that are out there. My favorite is Lose It, but there's a ton of others and then food journal for three days. And this is gonna give you an amazing snapshot of what you're doing. You see, ignorance is not bliss when it comes to losing weight, all right? You need to journal, you need to track, and you need to monitor so that you understand fully where you're at and where you need to step up your game. This isn't like throwing darts to a wall and hoping that one will stick. If we actually monitor, we don't need to throw darts. We can see exactly, oh my goodness, I'm not hitting my protein target. Holy shit, I ate a lot more than I thought I did that day. All right, food journaling does work and it's been shown scientifically as well. Now the fifth tip that we're gonna review before I sign off is I want you to eat at the right time of day. What does that mean? Well, cortisol has a natural rhythm and it is highest in the morning and then decreases gradually as the day progresses, being the lowest at night. And this is our body's way of helping our, our body fall asleep. So if eating tends to increase cortisol, pardon me, eating your largest meal earlier in the day is actually the best option for weight loss and maintenance. In addition, our body's ability to process carbohydrates decreases. It decreases as the day goes on. We metabolize carbs better and more efficiently in the morning compared to later on in the evening. And the more efficiently our body can use the food that we eat, the easier it is for us to lose the belly fat. So go through those five tips again to lose the menopausal belly fat. 
One, control your stress. I highly recommend just five to 10 minutes of deep breathing every day. That's an easy, simple start for us. Two, strength train. Aim for two times a week, working all the muscles in the body, work to three times a week. Three, eat regular meals throughout the day. Throw away that bullshit yo-yo dieting that we've all done in the past and let's just have a good relationship with food and eat regularly through the day. And then fourth, eat more protein. Aim for a gram of protein for per pound of body weight and spread that throughout the day. So a good recommendation is 20 to 30 grams of protein with your big meals and then aim for 10 to 15 grams with your snacks. And then finally, eat at the right time of day. Make your bigger meal in the morning and then taper off as you go and then have more carb-rich meals in the morning. So ideally, it'd be probably perfect to do the tortellini alfredo for breakfast <laughs> and the scrambled eggs and bacon for dinner, if you could stomach that sort of thing. So there are my five tips. I'm going to go through the other five tips next Friday. Now, if you need any assistance, don't forget the website's got a wealth of information. I have a whole tab called Mastering Menopause with a ton of blogs hooked up so that you can have easy access to whatever question or whatever is sort of plaguing you right now in your menopausal time. So I have, do you have any questions? Remember, this is live. So that means you can ask me some questions. It's great we've had a variety of different people drop in. I'm going to have this video up on the blog as well. So don't forget to check out the blog at fitnesswithpj.com. But really, ladies, we can go through menopause. We can rock it. We do not have to be a hot, sweaty mess. We can get this. All right? So stick with me. Every Friday, I'm going to be doing a chat. And I've also got, as I said, a ton of information on the website. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you live local, oh my goodness, I hope you survive the storm. We're having a brutal one out here. Have a great weekend. Bye. Oh.